get a mentor. It's Nina Carmichael. We made this video. It's because you're probably the most ambitious person in your circle. But you know you're capable of more. And you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, my husband Evan Carmichael. Mentor me, Evan. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Craft your guan dao. George Bernard Shaw famously said, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. The entrepreneurs who win are the unreasonable women and men who are trying to make a difference. You're different. You don't fit in. Stop trying to. Instead, make the world adapt to you. I want to tell you a story about Guan Yu and his Guan Dao. Let me get my prop. So, this is a heavy statue made of bronze. Let's hope my desk doesn't collapse from this. We good? Can we see? Okay, good. This is Guan Yu. Guan Yu is a legendary uh, Chinese general, god of war, and he was a huge man in Chinese history. He was huge by by stature, giant. He was bigger than everybody else that he was fighting against. So when he was getting started in fighting, when people gave him a regular sword or staff or spear, it was so light for him. It was too easy for him because he was such a giant beast of a man. And so instead of just taking the tools that everybody else was using, he made his own weapon called the Guan Dao. It's this, it's this crazy thing right here. It's this crazy you know, staff with a giant blade on the end of it, Guan Dao. Nobody else could lift this thing because it was so heavy. But he had it crafted for him because he could lift it and it made him even more powerful than everybody else because he had this giant weapon that he was using in all of his fights. That's what I think entrepreneurs need to do. That's what you need to do. You are a genius. You are Michael Jordan at something. You are Guan Yu at something. The greatest fighter in China at the time, right? That's you at something. And for you to win, you need to have your own Guan Dao. You need to craft your weapon, craft your business, craft your habits, craft your activities, craft the people around you so that you can leverage what you're naturally great at. I make videos, right? I love having my own message. I love DJing content. It's what I love doing. I can make four videos a day across my channels because I have a team of people who help create all of this stuff. If it was just me doing everything, I would not be making the content that I am. I built the business around me, what I'm great at, what I love doing, what I want to continue to excel and improve at. You need to find the same thing for you. You are a Guan Yu. You are a Michael Jordan. It's time to embrace that and then create something that hasn't been created before. That's what entrepreneurs are doing. Create your Guan Dao to let you do what you're so good at at an even higher level. So I've got a three-step process to help you believe more in your Michael Jordan Guan Yu level talent. I hope it helps. Step number one is trust your bold ideas. I believe that the ideas that come to you when you're feeling bold, when you're feeling confident are actually the best things for you. When you're in a state of feeling like you're the best, you're, you're full of motivation for whatever reason, whatever happened, maybe it's after watching this video, you feel like things are possible and you decide something or you can come up with an idea for something like I should go do that. That is the best idea for you. And then your head talks you down from it. Then you wake up the next day and say, oh, I can't do that. Who am I to do that? I don't have the resources, the skills, the time, the money, the connections to do that. I can't do that. And then with each day that passes, you feel less and less and less confident that you can do that. Your head talks you down from the big ideas. Hold on to them. The ideas that you come up with when you're feeling bold are the best ones for you. You have to chase those down. So the next time you get that bold idea, when you're feeling confident, trust in it. Believe in it, chase it down. It's your duty, it's your obligation, it's your destiny, it's your future, let's go. Step number two is think big, act small. This is where a lot of entrepreneurs fall down. You've got this big dream, big goal, you wanna change the world, I love it. Yes, that dream you have to have that will motivate you and the people around you to keep going because a lot of it is really hard. <laughs> Without that big dream that you're chasing down, it's hard to stay motivated every day. And at the same time, you need to act small. Just start. 
Just take the smallest possible step and build momentum. The thing that's missing from so many entrepreneurs, from most of you, is not, and it's not lack of ideas, it's not lack of genius, it's not lack of even ability. It's lack of momentum. You're just not doing enough. And so as soon as you get an idea, do something about it. You're thinking big, awesome, acting small. So you have that bold idea, amazing. What ends up happening to so many entrepreneurs is, well, in order for that to happen, I need to get venture capital. I need to get funding. I need to get a team. There's no way I could do it by myself. And you keep making that vision bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's it's inspiring, it's motivating, and it's scary. And it makes you feel like you can't do it without the right resources, connections, people, team around you. So to combat that, you need to get started. You just do it. You start. You want to start a YouTube channel? Amazing. Pull out a phone and go. Today, right now, immediate action. Let's go. Think big, start small. Don't worry about the lighting and the microphone and the camera and the gear and the people and the editing. It'll come with time. The biggest thing that's missing is momentum. Think big, act small. And step number three is remember the Wayne Gretzky rule. The Wayne Gretzky rule is you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. That's, that's so many entrepreneurs. I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs have come to me and they get upset because they see somebody else getting rich off of their idea. Somebody else is getting rich. Dummies often, dummies are getting rich off of your idea. They're making money, they're having an impact off of your idea. The difference is they just did something, they got started. Where you're still thinking and planning and tinkering and writing, writing your business proposal out instead of actually going out and doing. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Now, it doesn't mean you're gonna score a goal every time you take a shot, but the more shots you take, the better chance you give yourself of actually getting an outcome. Also, if you want to have more confidence and motivation, check out our 254 series. It's free, the link is in the description below. Find whatever the smallest first step is, and then the smallest next step is, and continue to build those steps. And when you look back, you'll have realized that you made some pretty significant progress. You can use rejection as fuel to help you go off and do something bigger and, and motivation to, I'm gonna prove them wrong. It's gotta be your life's work. If you only had to write one book ever in your life, this is it, and it's gotta be amazing. Rule number two, focus. The problem isn't that you're not a genius, that you're not talented, that you don't have wisdom and abilities and resourcefulness and that you're not Michael Jordan. That's not the problem. The problem is you're not focused. You're not doing the things that you need to do. I just came back from Video Marketing World in Dallas and I was being asked about where to spend your time, which social media sites to spend time on. And I think this is a classic example of, of where entrepreneurs fail is you're trying to do everything and as a result you suck everywhere and feel burnt out, tapped out and not building momentum. If you get to the end of a week and you feel like you worked your face off but you look back and what did I get done? If that's how you're ending a week, you worked hard and you feel like, what did I get done? You're not focused, you're switching between tasks too much. Instead of having all of these social media sites at the same time, pick one and crush it. I quoted Andrew Carnegie at my event, at my speech. My favorite quote from him is, put all your eggs in one basket and then watch that basket. Everybody's saying diversify, diversify, diversify. Have 18 different multiple streams of income. Look at the people who are, who are a one person show with 18 streams of income, they're making no money. You're making $10 a month from this and $25 a month from that and 18 cents from this. You're not making money. Now, as you build and scale and grow and you have a team like I do, I've got 24 people on my team. Okay, great, now it might be time to diversify. But as a solo person, you can't do everything yourself. And you are a genius. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. And that's what you need to find. And that's what you need to spend as much time as possible on until you're making money, you can invest back into your business and continue to grow. So let's look at social media. Great, pick one. Pick one, just pick one and crush it. Whether it's Twitter or Instagram or YouTube, whatever you think has the best combination of what you're good at. You know, so if you like making videos, YouTube's a great place to be. If you like writing, you can go on Twitter or Medium, right? Pick the one platform and then spend your time focused on that because if I look at most of people's content, you look at your own content, look at what you're posting across these platforms. Are you proud of it? Would you follow you? Probably not for too many people. So stop wasting time posting mediocre garbage and post quality in one spot and start to win there and then leverage it and then build a team and then expand. Same thing with products and services and business lines. 
you can't do a great job servicing your customers, investing back to research and development, coming up with new white, you can't, you can't. Not if you're doing 18 businesses at the same time. I had a woman come out to my uh, workshop when I was doing a tour and this was her issue. She was in real estate and she was in network marketing and she was in five different business lines. She said, well, I need to diversify. Diversify what? You don't have anything yet. You're, you're diversifying yourself out of a life, out of an income, out of a business. Where if you just had one super strong pillar that then won, you'll win. Now, the argument for diversification is, well, if one thing crumbles, you got something else. Great, but here's what people are missing. If YouTube crumbles, I'll take my skill set and go somewhere else. If my business crumbles, I'm still me. I'll take my skill set and move somewhere else. Look at Jake Paul and Logan Paul. They were on Vine. They crushed it on Vine. Top people on Vine. Vine closes down, right? Almost overnight, closes down. Great, they have a skill set. They come to YouTube and blow up. and get millions of subscribers. If YouTube goes away, for me, my skill set, is applicable to wherever people are going to watch video content next. If your business goes away, the skill set you've learned will go somewhere else. You haven't lost, you haven't forgotten how to do your thing. Diversification is only important when you don't know what you're doing. That's why it's a great investment strategy because you can't control the company. If, if Google starts tanking because they have some lawsuit, you have no control.